golf before. We're going to teach you how much fun it is to play, but we're also going to tell you how to play so us that know how to play don't have to wait for you to play out in the stupid golf course so we have to wait for every stupid thing you do. We're going to show you how to do it right. The first thing you do is you have to know when it's your turn. Now, you measure up. You align the ball. You point towards your target. You would, here, let me tell you the grip. The grip is done by taking your fingers, wrapping them around the grip like this. Then you fold them underneath rip your fingers in like this, twirling as a baton would, bang it up, pick it over your head, and get ready to slam it home. Pay attention. Then you get ready. You address the ball. You get ready to address the ball. You get ready. <laughs> Take a couple of practice swings. <laughs> you're gonna throw your swing all off. <laughs> and when you're ready, you get ready. You get set. You wanna kill it. You get ready to kill it. And then... <laughs> that ball went so far, I can't... <laughs> Good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to, uh, again, what is it, what do you want? Roasting Oh yeah, it's a surprise. <laughs> Tom's 60th birthday extravaganza. You know how much of a surprise it was when Tom was out in the corridor and perfect strangers were walking in. He was inviting them into the party. <laughs> Tonight we'll celebrate him, we'll poke fun at him, and maybe even say some nice things about him. For those uh, few here who don't know me, I am Tom's brother Jim, the better looking one. I've been awarded the dubious honor of emceeing, or more likely refereeing, Johnny. What we hope will be a memorable Cormier event. For the first part of our evening, during the next hour or so, I will be reading, and I'm reading now. Yes, sir. Okay. That's Johnny. I'm already refereeing him. I'll be reading a few thoughts and showing a video clip or two from people who couldn't be here tonight. I will also be asking some folks in the audience, Johnny. If they have a short story, etc., to share with us about Tom. It goes without saying that Tom is a rather unique bird. We all know how introverted and soft spoken he is. It's always been a chore to get him to speak above a whisper. He's also always been one to shy away from controlling a situation. And we're hoping he'll one day develop a sense of humor. Let's face it. It goes without saying, if something needs to be said, Tom will say it, and say it, and say it, and say it. Well, now that you've seen that photo, a long-standing family mystery has now been solved. Tom's actually the product of adoptive parents who are actually brother and sister. I'm going to get a little bit serious here. Wow, thanks. Many of you know that Tom is a very gifted songwriter, singer, and musician. Along with my brother John, I was extremely fortunate to spend most of the 1970s, although I don't remember much of it, sharing the stage with Tom in our band Brothers Kingdom, of which you were listening to during your meal. Give them a hand.
That was not milking it, was it? Uh, anyway, the music uh, uh, that you were listening to is a, a tiny, tiny sampling of live performances uh, of that band. You'll hear more later tonight in our final hour, when everyone is so inebriated they won't know what we're playing. Uh, live in person, there'll actually be a performance of Brothers Kingdom because they are all here tonight, the entire huge three-person band. Maybe not Joni, though. Those years of traveling up and down the Northeast Corridor ran the gamut of frustrating to exhilarating. Nonetheless, I am forever grateful that I shared that stage with Tom through so many magical nights. That leads me to the real reason I just told you this short story about the band. In high school, Tom was already a very talented guitarist for a very popular Massachusetts band called The Henchmen. That band was smoking hot. I said hot not pot. But as long as luck would have it, the Vietnam War was in high gear. And soon after graduating high school, Tom decided to serve his country. He didn't take the easier road, but instead joined the U.S. Marines, and soon was off to Vietnam, and didn't play again until he was discharged. Then a cruel fate visited upon him, only a few short months after returning home relatively physically unscathed with shrapnel wounds and a purple heart for his injury. Tom happened to be on the roof of a house working for a contractor. In the blink of an eye, while operating a power saw, the saw slipped and he lost two fingers and the thumb of his left hand. The hand you normally see flying up and down the fretboard of the guitar. After that devastating and ironic injury, months of recuperation, what did Tom do? Did he throw away the guitar? Forget playing ever again? Not Tom. He learned that you could play the guitar in a special tuning. He started from scratch and taught himself to play the instrument all over again. The results speak for themselves with years of outstanding stage performances and he continues to create great music to this day. If that wasn't enough, he taught himself how to play the banjo and used it on stage as well. He's also a gifted harmonica player. I think that experience more than any other typically defines my brother's indomitable spirit and his character. But he does talk a lot. A lot and a lot. So anyway, uh, that's all I'm going to do with me for now. I'll come back and do something else in a minute. But uh, what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to read a couple of uh, things that people have sent in. Uh, also, I'm going to um, call up anybody in the audience who'd like to tell a little story. And uh, we'll get to that in just a second. But uh, I'll start with this. It's a real quick one. This is, uh, <laughs> this is from uh, Tom's cousin, Jeannie. And she wasn't able to make it. And of course, she wishes she could be here. But uh, she says, the thing that comes to mind is when uh, all the brothers used to recite this strange number 10 song. And she says, I still remember it, too. It goes like this. A big fat hen, a couple of ducks, three running hair, four fake foxes, five fabulous fingers, six simple Simons sitting on stumps. Seven Sicilian sailors sailing the seven seas, eight egotistical egotists echoing egotistical ecstasies, nine nebulous nuns nibbling on nuts and nicotine butts, ten I can't pluck figs while like the fig pluckers son, so I'll keep plucking, plucking figs till the fig pluckers come. We almost got closed down. Not yet. <laughs> Rick's still working on that part. <laughs> All right. Uh, I have a, a, a kind of a little, little story and a little poem from uh, Tom's uh, niece, Colette, who lives out on the West Coast. And uh, she asked me to read this. And then uh, I'd like to see if we can have somebody from the audience come up. And then I'll get back to a couple other stories here. This is from Colette. 
Will you be or what will you have achieved at 60? Would you be with the woman you love? Would you have children that look up to you and respect you? Would you have served your country? Would you have survived and come back in one piece? Would you be the most successful you could ever be in love and in wealth? Would you be able to hold anyone's attention as soon as you enter a room? <laughs> oh yeah, it's about you. If you're able to answer all of these questions, then you must be my Uncle Tom. I know that this is a roast of you, however. When I think of you, Uncle Tom, I can only think of you in the highest respect. You have brought joy and love always to the table. I only have warm and unforgettable memories of our times together. And now to end with a short poem. And I can't rhyme this, so go with it. A man of 60 walks into the room, sees his beautiful wife of many wonderful years. His heart flutters, and he thinks of the first day he met her. Fondly, he remembers how lucky he is to have her love. He thinks of the day he held his first child, a boy. How proud he felt he was complete for the moment. Now he remembers how much joy he felt when she says, we're going to have another. <laughs> Lo and behold, two makes the family complete. Now he thinks of his life as of today. Will there be trouble? You bet. Will he succeed? You can count on it. As a man of 60, he is complete. I love you very much, Uncle Tom, and I hope that you'll have a wonderful birthday and remember that you have a whole lifetime ahead of you. You keep growing that beard. <laughs> Did you see Rick Wick? And nobody saw Rick Van Winkle about you know two days ago. It's pretty funny. Uh, all right, so let me ask: Is there anyone in the audience who would like right to now and tell a story, Tim? Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> Come on down. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Tom coming on stage. the best thing that ever happened to Tom. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but I cut Tom's hair. So he had this little routine. I get all my stuff. I get the cape and the, the little stool that he sits on. And it's right next to the mirror. And I'm filling up my little squirt bottle. In the meantime, Tom comes into the room and he proceeds to sit down on that stool and it's a little like this. And he takes forever to sit on the stool. <laughs> and then he has this shaver and when he's ready to shave, it makes this little sound. He goes, Help me, Tom. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. He does that every time he shaves. <laughs> Tom's got a pretty full life. <laughs> yeah, it took a whole lifetime to get to that level. Okay, so. Are you uh, well, I, I'll do that later. I promise. Okay, nice Bye, All right, so here he comes. You're lining up. Look out. Carol's moving forward. <laughs> I believe that's Tim moving forward. Oh, it's a tag on my life. Am I supposed to do a song while I'm waiting for you? Or? <laughs> Tom's brother Tim. Things. So 
some really good things about Tom and the things that frustrate me about Tom. And let me start off with the, with the good, the, you know, forget the good things. I'm going to do the bad things first. things it only take me an hour or so. What time are we going to be out of here? 11? <laughs> Johnny, you're looking at about 10.30. <laughs> Before I tell you a couple of things that I uh, want to talk about with Tom, I've written down a couple of questions that I need answered as a Tomaholic. <laughs> First of all, why have we not had an awards night or a parade for Chris yet? think that sweatpants are in? <laughs> and, and last but not least on these questions, but mom and dad, why? <laughs> just why couldn't you have just skipped him and gone right to Joan and Johnny? <laughs> you know I mean? It's not a big deal. Serious though, I want to tell you a couple things about Tommy and life lessons. Uh, hanging around Tommy, I've learned a lot of things. One of the things was about what you learn about a person on a golf course. Went to Florida and played golf with my soon-to-be son-in-law Jason one time, and we were in the golf cart, and Jason got in the woods and he hit a tree with the ball. And Tommy looked at me and he said, about a person you learn on the golf course, and I said, "Yeah, no kidding." About three holes later, Tommy had thrown his club for the fifth time, <laughs> and Jason came up to me and went, "That's a five hundred dollar driver." And I said, "Yeah, Jason, you learn a lot about a guy on a golf course." <laughs> so, another thing you learn about is uh, Tommy when it comes to. We own a paintball business. I don't know if everybody knew that, but we owned a paintball business together. And we had this big group band, and they were going to have this massive war, and Tommy goes, hey, let's join in on the war. And I thought, great, Vietnam vet. I'm going to learn something. <laughs> so we put on a camo, and we had the mask on, and we're all good, and the war stops, and Tommy goes, really thick bushes over there. And I said, okay. So we went to thick bushes, and people were going by, and every time I went, yeah, right there, he went, shh, shh, shh. That was when I learned, work smarter, not harder. <laughs> Just telling you, these were life lessons for me. <laughs> Needless to say, we ended up getting caught, but we all know how that goes. Uh, another thing that happened in a life lesson is we went to Florida one time on a trip, and we got stuck in a snowstorm in Florida, believe it or not. On the way back, we ended up at a pancake house. This place was so packed that they ran out of everything. The place, the, the highway was closed, and it had reached a point where people were being arrogant to the waitresses. Tommy stood up in the middle of a pancake place. And I tell you, no, I don't need to. He's very loud. <laughs> and he got everybody in that place to shut up without saying shut up. And he made a point of saying that these people are people like everybody else, and you need to treat them with respect. And I thought, you know, that was really great, and, and I, it's another lesson that I've learned about Tom is no matter what he's ever done, he's always had respect for people, and I like that. It means a lot to me. So I, I know I'm kind of going back and forth a little here, a little serious, a little humor, but everything about him is that way. <laughs> The, uh, the brothers and friends of ours, we used to all fly down to play golf, and uh, you know, this was 10 or 15 years ago, and we used to stay at this place in Rarity Paradise, and we used to have a lot of time, a good time golfing and boating and all that. So one time we were coming back on the plane, and one of the people in the group said, well, I guess it's time to go back into our depressed world and, you know, our reality, and I thought, you know, I don't look at it that way. I look at it as inspiring. Tommy inspires me. I someday are going to live in Tennessee 
in a big house, on the water, playing golf, and live the life that he's doing because it inspires me. Needless to say, I do live that life today, and it definitely has inspired me. Unfortunately, what I wasn't looking forward to is, he told me, he said, uh, you're going to live in a place that's called Thomasie. Not Tennessee, Thomasie. And you're going to live in Tom Rowe County. You're probably going to live in a subdivision called Tomico Harbor. And do a lot of boating on Tomico Lake. I couldn't resist. I'm a Tomaholic. I've been involved with Tom in, in a lot of things since I moved to Tennessee. Uh, I know that he has got a lot of confidence and, and I know he's going to succeed. And uh, I love the things that I'm watching him do. And because of that, he continues today to inspire me. If Jimmy wasn't throwing me little nods over here, I'd probably say a lot more, but I know we're on a tight schedule. Um, but no, I, I just want to tell you. For anyone that's not familiar with our family, this is the longest I've spoke without Johnny or Tommy interrupting me. <laughs> this is new. I'm in a new area right here. They got Jimmy standing close just in case. You know? They're texting. Okay, Jim. You know, Johnny has to speak. Uh, but anyway, I just want to say that I love you, Tom. You inspire me. And uh, I wish you a happy birthday, and thanks for being here today, and I look forward to a bright future with you.